how to rebuild something. It, you know, you can't replicate what was here. Can't build something back from the 40s. It's been just two weeks since the fires swept through the Mackenzie River Valley outside Eugene, leaving homeowners little time to get out. And today, ODOT opened a portion of Highway 126 near the towns of Rainbow and Blue River, giving us a look at the damage left behind. They are among the hardest hit areas in the Holiday Farm fire. Devin Haskins reports from Blue River. Here's the Lazy Days RV Park near the Blue River community. These are just some of the over 700 homes and buildings that were destroyed in the Holiday Farm Fire. And today, home and business owners are getting their first look at what's left behind. Where do you start? Brought these from Japan. When the loss is so great. We had 41 years of marriage worth of a house right here. <laughs> All gone. Where do you start when this was supposed to be your dream home? Our beautiful little house in the woods by the river. Now it's this, I'm sorry. And everything I've ever had in my entire life is gone. But I'm alive, so you know, that's the important thing. The Holiday Farm Fire was so hot and monstrous, everything in its path on the Davis's property is unrecognizable. I had a jet ski. We had a jet ski. It's, it's nowhere gone. to be found. There was two riding lawnmowers in there. They're melted to nothing. The Davises are not alone. In the Blue River community just west of them, every home in this part has been wiped out. A fire so hot, tires melted off the wheels, and a school bus that's crumpled like tinfoil. Farther east on Highway 126, the devil of a fire ripped through Patrick and Nancy Dabala's store. Yeah, that was the counter for that box there. Oh. For over 20 years, Christmas treasures brought joy to thousands of customers. Everybody that came in, everybody was excited. Treasures reduced to ashes or buried under the frame of the two-story store that fell on top of itself. Merry Christmas, place. Much left. There's not much left of the store or some homes, but one thing will always remain. It's what brought so many smiles to the customers at Christmas Treasures. The Christmas spirit still exists. This was just a house, a building. But I miss the customers. Patrick and Nancy don't know what the future holds, but as for their neighbors, Dennis and Debbie Davis, we just want to rebuild and go on. This is where we retire. This is beautiful. Even though a portion of the McKenzie Highway is still open, ODOT requests that you as a homeowner do not come in or even the general public to come take a look around. Lane County has set up a website with photo assessments showing the damage. So you can just put in your address and see how your home fared in the Holiday Farm Fire. We'll post that link to KGW.com. In Blue River, I'm Devin Haskins, KGW News. All right, thank you, Devin. In Clackamas County, the Riverside fire is now 26% contained. Some evacuation orders are being downgraded, allowing people to return home. Deputies are working to keep people out of the level three evacuation areas. They've made more than 20 arrests for crimes ranging from burglary, arson and theft. Investigators say they are looking into two suspicious fires. One burned a vehicle and a 14 year old was arrested for starting a barn fire. Officials stress these are not connected, though, to the larger fires. Crews are making progress on the fires burning in Marion County. The Lion's Head fire covers nearly 200,000 acres. It's 13% contained. The Beachy Creek fire along Highway 22 is 38% contained. That fire burned 192,000 acres and destroyed many homes and businesses in the Detroit Lake area. Well, the cleanup continues in the burn areas, including miles of roads still closed because of the risk of falling trees. Chris McGinnis shows us the work needed. It's been more than two weeks since the Labor Day winds fanned the devastating wildfires across western Oregon. Those fires have consumed almost a million acres of Oregon forests, and nearly 200 miles of ODOT roads are still closed. Here's a look Tuesday at the destruction near Detroit. ODOT crews have weeks ahead assessing damage and lining up repairs. We've closed uh, 244 miles of state roads. We're closed at the peak in here. The evaluation process is going to be enormous. It's going to take a long time. Hundreds of thousands of trees burned near ODOT roads. They'll have to be cleared along with all the other debris. Hillsides, bridges, culverts all need to be evaluated. It's possible some major repairs will be needed. They just don't know yet. And roads will need to be repaired, restriped, 
and signs replaced. Recall the 2017 Eagle Creek fire. ODOT's cost was $21.5 million. 47 miles of Interstate 84 was impacted, and 13 miles of the historic Columbia River Highway was closed for months. It's going to take a long time, and the work we have to do is uh, far, far greater than the recovery from the Eagle Creek fire. The slow process will be more challenging as the fall rain becomes heavier and steadier. This becomes more difficult with the expected rains, with the threat of slides. There's a lot of different uh, dangers that we're facing right now as we start the recovery process. ODOT has been able to open about 50 miles of road so far, a number which increases daily. You can go to tripcheck.com for the very latest on road closure information. I'm Chris McGinnis for KGW News. And you can still help those in need by giving to our Northwest Response Fund. Just go to kgw.com forward slash Red Cross to donate. We want to give a huge thank you to everyone who's gotten behind this effort already. Over the past couple weeks, we've raised more than $1.7 million to help people in Oregon and Washington. It's the small restaurants that, that really create our city. This has such a big impact in so many levels. During the pandemic, outdoor seating was really a game changer for many Portland restaurants. But now with the weather changing, owners worry about losing that option. Morgan Romero checks on the outlook for the restaurant scene. Changing leaves signify damp, chilly weather to come. It's going to impact everybody and all of our numbers. Since restaurants restarted sit down service, many relied on patios or street and sidewalk permits this summer. When I dine out, I don't even want to sit inside. So, you know, having a patio is crucial in these times. If they can't or choose not to seat people outside and tables inside are spaced out or empty, that means even less money coming in. That really is going to limit the ability for us to have the amount of people that we need to have for the business to make sense. Renata owner Sandra Arnrich closed their dining room, likely for good. They shifted to takeout only a few days a week. Being in a enclosed space with a heater going and people maskless at tables uh, when we're still in the middle of a pandemic is not the responsible thing to do for us and for our staff. Arnrich feels she's mourning her dream. So it is like it is like losing a family member. She raised her kids in this place. My heart breaks for us and for our restaurant, but it also breaks for the other restaurateurs that will be facing that same reality that we're facing. Others. We'll try to make it work. People are not afraid to eat indoors as well. Plenty of ventilation. It's as safe as possibly can be at this point. We're going to do something out here uh, for the rain and whatnot, and we have heaters. Restaurant group Department of Food and Shelter closed a few of its spots. Chefs are embarking on a new culinary adventure in the old Nona space. And we're just going to try to adapt as well as we can, and hopefully all of us survive. <laughs> That seems to be the theme of COVID. I think we're going to take everything day by day. Um, will we put a cover over it? I don't know. I don't think so. People sat on the sidewalks with our uh, permits on our sidewalk, even in the cold. The Paleys feel hopeful about the future of their restaurants, although two inside hotels downtown remain shuttered. As long as staff and customers keep their guards up, they're hopeful Portland's restaurants rebound. Portland has been and, and I hope continues to be dining destination across the nation. Others fear the worst. It's definitely scary and I have no idea if my future is guaranteed in this industry or not. Up and down where I am right now on Northwest 21st, restaurants and bars have permits to see people in the streets or on sidewalks from Peabot, but those expire November 1st. Peabot says they're looking into whether to extend those permits right now. Kristen. All right, great information. Thanks, Morgan. We're following a developing situation in Gresham. A driver drove into Gresham City Hall and caused some bad damage. The driver was taken to the hospital with injuries that are not life threatening. No one else was hurt. Heads up to drivers. Southbound Northwest Eastman is blocked from the back driveway of the police department to the Max tracks.